Hi! With a 130 OS update, Syntax got four new machines for the analog tracks. One of them being SideChip, a hybrid analog digital synth engine, which can do things like sit style, chip tune, fast arpeggios, PVM basses, but also drums. When Sidechip was released last year for the Analog Rhythm OS 170, I made a complete reference video with background details on how it works and how to use it. Maybe you can click somewhere here or in the description to find it. In this video I'm mainly going to focus on how to design drum sounds in a style often used in Commodore 64 music. I will step by step build up most of the sounds you're hearing right now and then do some kind of jam with it at the end. Let's start with making a kick, snare and a hi-hat. We first take an empty pattern and assign side chip to one of the analog tracks. The default sound is this, a minor 7th chord at 50Hz using a triangle wave which I'm now changing to highlight some of the different waveforms available. This parameter sets the speed of the arpeggio in Hertz or in note value. Some of the waveforms are table based, meaning also the waveform itself will change at the arpeggio rate. The arpeggiated notes are set as offsets from the root with the parameters below. Here I'm changing the minor third to a major. And setting an offset to zero will disable it, including all that comes after. So we can make three note, two note or just one single steady note. But also with the steady note the wavetable is still scanned. Alright, a kick. Back to the default sound again. We'll use a waveform called table 3 for this, which will generate a short noise transient, followed by two arp slices of square, and then continues with triangle. For a kick drum we would like a quick pitch drop, so let's tune it down, then do a little drop. Minus 6, minus 12, and minus 17. We then raise the speed to 50Hz, as that is the most used update rate for these things on the Commodore 64. It already sounds a bit like a kick, but it's repeating, which we don't want. So we use this setting, and letting the table just play once, 50 single shot, and then adjust the decay to suit it. Then a snare, default sound again. The waveform called table 1 will give us a short noise burst, followed by two slices of square, and then continues with noise. We want to have a slight pitch drop on the square, then followed by the high pitched noise. And we don't need to modify the third offset, so let's delete that. Then we set the speed to the 50Hz single shot, already sounding like a snare. However, I would like this end noise to be pitched higher. And what we can do is a little trick. We use the LFO and let the third offset be modulated upwards, actually outside of its normal range. And if using a slow one-shot square, we basically get a new pitch control. There, a nice snare. Let's hear the kick and snare together. The last important component is the hi-hat, so let's create one. Once again, default sound. The waveform should be noise in this case. I also want just a little transient change, so adding a plus 5 and removing the other offsets. Speed at 50Hz single shot again. We want the pitch to be high, so I'm using the trig note to set at the highest C7. It's already pretty okay, but I like it to be pitched even higher, so let's use the trick from last time. A single shot LFO, but on the tune parameter this time. So I'm using a slow speed, and then I can raise the pitch further. Lastly, a shorter decay to get the hi-hat sound. Then some volume balancing. For the true chip music style, the drums should not be on separate tracks, as voices are always shared to make room for other sounds. Here's a pattern which uses them on one track.
To save voices further, one trick is to combine kick and bass on the same sound. Let's make one. We'll use the dot square waveform, which means a short noise burst followed by a square waveform. And we create a pitch drop. Then the regular one shot at 50 Hz. And now we can use the last parameter as the actual bass note. The pattern is now extended to show this in context as well. A type of snare sound that was used a lot by Rob Hubbard in the early days was to use a noise which shifts its pitch. First we select the table 2 waveform, which has a short noise burst followed by one slice of triangle, one square and then noise. We set up the initial attack like this and then noise here. Now we should modulate the noise pitch which we do with an LFO. and then adjust the decay a little. And speaking of Rob Hubbard, let's make one of his signature tom sounds. This time using the square plus waveform, which starts with a square wave followed by one noise slice and then square. Tune it down a bit and set the initial attack to be more or less steady, minus one here and then pitched up. 50 Hz speed, but in single shot mode, as always. And to get the smooth pitch drop, we will use the LFO on offset 4. And we set it to a ramp. And we play half of it. Now we just need a deeper depth. Then adjust the decay. Lastly, we just need to modify the amp envelope to get a whole stage, followed by a quick decay. There we go, classic Hubbard Tom. Now let's listen to this in context. As you might have heard, there were some other new sounds there. One thing is this small tom based on the dot tri waveform, which has a short noise burst followed by a triangle waveform. It looks like this. Okay, all we need now is some classic fast ARPs added to the beat. And here's a closer look at those ARPs. As can be seen here, the oscillator pulse width is modulated with an LFO using a triangle waveform. That's all on the sound design. Now let's put the pieces together and play some melody over it. And everything here is using three channels of side chip.
Thanks for watching.